here we are in a sunny Hollywood. I'm in my car. Uh, and nice. We're talking. Excellent. Yeah. I was, it was so funny. I was so worried about the lighting behind me because I wanted to get the lighting better uh, when I'm talking to you, of course, and then I forgot to ultimately turn on the camera. <laughs> you know, after so many years, I, I end up putting a, a, a just a spotlight on my face at my home because it looked horrible without it. So, right. so yeah, I'm in the sun, so I'm good. Yeah, so, uh, and you look fine as well, Clarence. Clarence. Excellent. That Thank movie. you. Love that. Like that name, Clarence. Thank you. It's a family name. Uh, it's a, a huge pleasure to speak to you. I do consider you one of the finest cinematographers to ever step behind the camera. Um, so it, it's a huge honor for me. Um, Thank you. I, you know, obviously we're in the heat of award season and I'd love to get into West Side Story here in a second. Um, but just generally speaking about award season, when you look at cinematography, like, uh, you know, I have an idea of what makes interesting cinematography. I'm very curious, though, given your perspective, what do you think makes great cinematography when you're looking at the broad array of what's been offered this year? Well, I mean, I think it's a very mysterious profession to some degree. And mm -hmm. those who made the choices to nominate us are often uh, a little bit confused by what what it means. You know, this year, the choices were done very nicely. I would say, uh, I mean, a good, very good group of people and, and the work is very diverse. You know, I mean, I love Bruno's work, amazing. I think Ari did an amazing job with Power of the Dog. You know, uh, you know and again, uh, Dune is an amazing, amazing movie. So, so I feel really great being in this, in this group, group of people, you know. And I think automatically the way people respond to the movies, to cinematography used to be, you know, if you had a Western exterior movie, you're gonna get nominated because you make everything beautiful. These days, I think that perception has changed. And, and, the, and the conventional beauty does not mean you will be automatically rewarded with, 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 with nomination. But I think right. due to the sophistication of the audience, automatically the, 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 the visual metaphors, the poetic, poetic way that, that, that we, we write and we, we, we reflect that the, the, the script has been recognized by, by those who have that power of, of, of nominating us. And, and, and this year they succeeded, not because I'm in it, but because, you know, because the movies were really great, you know. And I think we, we were holding down with good movies coming out last year. Not that last year movies were no good, but a lot of the big, big, big epics were not released last year because we were right. waiting for, for, for the cinematography. How do you judge editing, right, by amount of cuts? But I think automatically... Right. What's important is that you as a viewer, you relate to the material and you're emotionally moved by the images. That's all. Yeah. So you've obviously worked with Steven Spielberg for um, several pictures since I think Schindler's List. Um, when you approach right. a Spielberg project, is there sort of a, a visual dictionary or is it, are there consistent colors, palettes that you use with his work or does it really depend on the material? There isn't any consistent in terms of uh, his his movie making process, but that's not the right expression. I mean, there are certain similarities in every movie because at the end, he's the artist who is telling the story, but there is no formula. That's the word I was looking for. There's no formula how we make those movies, you know. There are certain montage that we often do, you know, and we know what, those, what that montage will be. There are certain uh, transitions and the director's job is to come up with with great transitions and certainly he comes up with, uh, with amazing transitions from scene to scene, shot to shot, but that's just the skillfulness. There's nothing said. We know that emotionally he's interested in certain themes and his work clearly reflects those, those, those themes, you know, uh, when you think of, you know, uh, War of the Worlds, you know, it's a very entertaining movie, but at the end it's a movie about Tom Cruise trying to connect, reconnect with his children. It happens that the monsters are coming out and the world is falling apart. But essentially it's about that very, very specific primal need of a father to be accepted by, by his children, you know? And I definitely have that because my kids are 17, they live in Toronto and, and I'm trying to still working, being accepted by them. So, so I, ref, you know, the success of the story, of the collaboration comes from that, that he makes movies that I want to watch, that I want to be mm -hmm. part of. 
and he makes movies the way that I enjoy watching movies and to be to be part of his his vocabulary to some degree because I became part of his vocabulary just like the camera moves you know and 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 and, and the camera operator on Mitch Dubin we are part of his vocabulary and for the last 25 30 years we've been making very interesting movies and different from one to another but yet there are some similarities you know you're watching Spielberg movie when you watch Spielberg movie right and the subject right. matter the scope the sensitivity the camera moves all that stuff so in that way there are some similarities but otherwise you know, it's always a new experience. Right. So um, working with him has brought you seven Oscar nominations, West Side Story being your seventh. You've won twice for Schindler's List and Saving Private right. Ryan. When you approached, started to think about how you were going to approach West Side Story, what kind of visual inspiration did you take from the script? Like what was your, what were some of your, your hallmarks, how you were going to lens this? Well, the, the biggest visual inspiration was the essence of, of the of the story and, 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 and the or, origins of the story. It is a mm -hmm. Broadway play, and, and, and certainly I've, I've seen Broadway plays, and I've been always, you know, impressed by the visual impact the plays have. I may not identify with the stories, but I'm, I, I like the, the, the visual aspect of, 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 of Broadway, you know, and, 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 and that was the approach, you know, create, create a Broadway play. Broadway type of visual storytelling on the streets of New York, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and, and so forth, and create that kind of sense of glamour. And, 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 and that glamour comes from that essence of the story. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a love story, it's a drama, it's a very entertaining musical. So, so certain things need to be said in a way that, that we're not breaking the visual uh, the expectations of, of this particular genre, right? I mean, very clearly from the beginning, the romance had to be established not just through the through the staging and and performance, but the light light had to be part of that romance. So so we 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 came up with the idea of having these visual flares, visual moments where we you know the boy sees the girl, the girl sees the guy. The light is very much focused on the characters that we are telling the story about. So so because of the theatrical aspect of the story. The lighting could have been theatrical and and very romantic to some degree. And I want everyone to look great. You know, every single person needed to look beautiful and 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 and, and handsome and attractive and and not because they need to look. It's, it's because the story. It's a, that kind of a bigger than life story, right? So even when you when you're looking at people dying, being killed, it's still amazing image to look at. Although the drama is so powerful that you are taken by the by the reality of of death and the fight, but still. It is a spectacle to look at, right? Uh, if someone asked me, "Is there? Can the war be beautiful?" And I said, "The war cannot be beautiful by 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 the definition of the war, but it sure is a spectacle, right? I mean, with the with the explosions, with the fire, with that, it's a spectacle. It's a tragic spe spectacle, but sure is a spectacle, you know." Yeah. So talking about that moment in the in the gym when Antoni first meets Maria, that's part of what right. I call a series of almost like magic magical realism within the film so you've got right. the flares you've got the the light that that is it is it is not a a literally lit scene right is not how you would see a normal dance no. within a gym but you've also got the moment where uh, tony is walking through the uh the alley and he steps into the puddle and the camera swoops right. up and then you've got the spotlights reference it's almost like a it's almost it, to me it reminded me of uh, van gogh of um of the night sky picture um painting well thank um, you but, that's a, that's a great yeah. compliment thank you oh it, it was absolutely I mean, gorgeous you know, took my breath away thank you i mean look again nothing in this movie is really fully realistic right i mean the moment right. the actor start singing you you out of uh, out of realism, right? Uh, mm -hmm. um, and and you have that chance to to be very beautiful with, with, with work. Uh, mm -hmm. The the dance the dance scene when the dancing was difficult because of the scope of the scene and how intricate the 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 the, 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 the blocking and choreography was. You know, you're creating mm -hmm. essentially a duel between both both teams, right? And the camera constantly moves. You know, and yet you've got you know. 80, 100 people there, and the light has to be beautiful, glamorizing. You cannot just have this top light with, with, with big, 
shadows under the eyes. You know, you have right. to start bringing right. the lights and and moving the lights with the actors as they as they dance into the scene and and fading one section of the scene depending which direction the camera is pointing. You fade you fade away some lights. You bring some lights. So it can so, so it's constant ballet between the actors, the camera, and the guy on the dimmer board who fades the lights and brings the lights in, and another guy who who's got a handheld light standing next to the camera lighting the the the, the, the characters. You know, so mm -hmm. it's a very very intricate operation, very busy, and you have to do it on time and schedule, right? Um, right. The thing with the, with the under the staircase, you know, I did a little rehearsal prior to, to shooting that scene because I didn't know how many flares I can have, how much flares, how much can I flare the image before the image becomes just a mushy, unrecognized image, you know? Am I romantically moved, am I emotionally moved by the poetry, by the images? And you know, originally when I did tests, I had many more flares. And as I was looking at the dailies, and now you did the test with, with, with Ansel and Maria and Rachel, and I was talking to myself and just saying to myself, this is the light needs to get eliminated. That light flares too much. That light needs to move to the right. This color mm -hmm. is no good. All that stuff, knowing that our choreography will be similar to, to what I was doing because there's only one way to do it. They, you get 180, camera's gonna move 180. So yeah, you're shooting you know, right, left and front on. So, so I was able to eliminate some of those flares. Otherwise I would fail. I would be too many flares or I would just use fewer flares out of being afraid that, that, that it's too much. So mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff is rehearsed, right? Right. Well, talking about rehearsal, I mean, obviously, Must Side Story is a classical Broadway musical, which has a lot of dance sequences in it. It's a lot, a lot of musical numbers, a lot of dancing, not only within the gym, but the Officer Krumsky number is something that right. I'm thinking of where it's it's uh, extremely tightly choreographed. Um, right. Talk to me about the collaboration that you had with the choreo choreographer to try to be able to, to have the camera in the right place to be able to film all of the action that they, he has staged. Right. Which is a very interesting observation. And, you know, we, Stephen... Stephen participated twice the amount of time during the rehearsals. I was there maybe for four weeks. He was there for eight weeks. And he watched how the rehearsals evolved. You know, he watched Justin's and, and Patricia's, his wife, co-choreographer co co work. And it was very clear to, to learn and realize that those are very precise moves that the, that the actors, dancers have. So almost like working with the stuntman or even more understand me because the entire movie is about dance so every sequence is almost a stunt sequence where the actors have to hit precise marks otherwise everything falls apart the nature of the dancers is that they do hit the marks otherwise the dance would fall apart and you would not have a show so we knew that we can place our cameras very precisely according to our knowledge where the actors land how they move you know and we knew right. that we can follow them very precisely because the movement is so precise there's no mistakes you know, and, and, and so consequently, subsequently, we are able to coordinate our camera moves to reflect the beauty of the movement. But also, besides just white shots, we're able to come closer to the dancers and see their performance because mm -hmm. they are not just dancers. They are also great performers. They reflect the, you know, the, the joy, the, the drama, the sadness you know, of, the, of, of each particular dance. So the audience was able to identify you know, and appreciate not just the not just the beauty of their costumes and the dance, but actually they could appreciate the, the performance that those kids were, were, were giving. And they were amazing. I mean, they, you yeah. know, there were, there were people who's, who have danced since they were 14. Some of them, you know, the David, David Alvarez, he was, he was in the new since he was eight years old. You know, this guy's been on Broadway for most of their lives. At this point, they're 24, 25, 30. They've been dancing for 15, 20 years. So they were amazing. The camaraderie, was just amazing. So that was a one, one aspect of this movie that I will always cherish, how non-competitive they were, how giving they were to each other, how supportive they were. And it just doesn't matter whether it's answer or whether it's re rave, you know, it's ever, not rave, but reef. No, it's, it's all, they all treat each other with great respect and love, you know? Yeah. yeah. So um, I have all kinds of questions I have for multiple scenes, but I want to focus on one thing, the ending, where you shot... Um, from a distance elevated the funeral right. procession, what I'll call. Um, talk to me about setting that shot up. Why was it shot from the right facing center? Why not align it in the center? Um, you know, just, just interested in your, in well, your progress there. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's the storytelling. And if you look at the beginning of the movie where the camera reveals the, the, the breaking ball, part of mm -hmm. the, the opening, there's a part of the, 
part of the uh, fire escape, uh, uh, you right. know, which is foreshadowing the whole movie. So same with this, you know, it's that, you know, when you think of West Side Story, you think of the fire escape yeah. iconic moments, you know, and, and so we ended up with that, 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 that crumbling world around them, you know, that, that, mm -hmm. that, 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 that the, the, the drama of that particular moment where the funeral profession is going, procession is going away and, and revealing that the city being part of that story. That story mm -hmm. could not happen anywhere else, but, but, but in New York, you know, that's, that's that particular story. There are other love stories happening in the rural environment. This one needed to happen in New York and we needed to remind the audience the essence of the city and the important fact that the city played in the storytelling. But what was interesting, we shot on the location several times. And I remember one day, maybe two, three days before, we shot that particular scene. That was in Patterson. I was driving back to Manhattan and we finished shooting just before sunset. That's a different scene. And we're driving, the sunset just said, I'm going over the bridge and I'm looking at New York, you know, this beautiful blue evening light, non-direct light. And I got to my apartment and I texted Stephen and said, this would be amazing. And as I was texting him, he texted me the same thing, saying, hey, let's do the funeral profession at that particular moment when the sun, just, when the days start just coming up, you know? And we stayed it that way. So so in the white shot, you start seeing the blue sky, which is, you know, it's a drama, but yet the life goes on, it's hopeful. They go, life goes on. We witness this, this moment of, of, of intensive drama, but yeah. life goes on, you know? And that was the significance of, of that particular shot, that the, the world that we, we witness is disappearing, but the, but, the, but the drama was always going to be there in different form. And having right. the light coming up was a part of the visual vocabulary. Got it. Well, Janus, I think those are all the questions I have for you. Thank you so much for the time. Brilliant work. I love Good the film. I loved your work in it. Thank you so much. Thank Take you care. very much. Pleasure of talking to you. Thank you.